Oh, hello, Andre. We meet again, right? Yes. Hi, Gary. How are you? Good. Good. Just by background, just by background, for if anybody hasn't seen our previous, we were dealing with agoraphobia, anxiety, yes. all kinds of good things happen as a result of that. Uh, you're at a van, you were taking little or none of it for weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and so the earth. No, seriously, the not, none of it for weeks, like since okay. August, right. since, since the first, uh, August 31st. Okay. The heat urticaria, which you didn't really work on, seemed to have gone. OCD seems to have gone. Lots yes. of things have gone almost magically. Would I say it right? Uh, no, absolutely. Correctly. It's uh, correct. They're saying it correctly. It's it's complete. It's not completely gone. I mean, like OCD, the compulsion is still there, but I don't have to act on it. Meaning if I see something that isn't organized the way it should be, I don't have to fix it. And I kind of smile at myself that I don't have to anymore. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, that, the, we need more just a habit than anything. Sure. Right. So the, the point here is, is now we're having some recurrence of the anxiety or the panic that would go with visiting outside your house and things like that. Right. Right. Okay. Now you wrote me, you wrote me this detailed letter. Okay. You can see I made some notes. Okay. okay. <laughs> about that. And, and we talked on the phone about it because we, we want to do a little bit with that today. See if we can't uh, do something with that. But I, I want to make a point first for the people listening in. There, there tends to be this, um, well, I got to do something here. Just a minute. But there, te there tends to be this perception that people have sometimes about healing in general, but particularly about EFT is it's supposed to be some kind of a magical one minute wonder, wave your hand, everything goes away forever, nirvana. Yeah. Okay. Well, sometimes it works that way or seems to. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's the sort of the popular perception out there. And then, and when it doesn't, it's not permanent or there's more left to do or something like that, which is natural and normal and to be expected. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people say, Oh, it didn't work. Oh, it didn't work. Okay. Right. I mean, that is a perception people have. What's going on here is that it did work for you and it did work superbly. But one of the things we do a lot, and I'm a, I'm big on this is to, test things test 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 because we never want to be fooled by a temporary result we never know for sure if we've gotten everything and all of that and one of the greatest tests is the real world <laughs> That's true. And, and for you that real world really hasn't bothered you for weeks right recently it has recently well, talk about what happened. Well, as I said to you in my in my email, um, my whole life it's always been one step forward and two steps back. When I made any progress, it just was eradicated somehow. And now with this, I feel more that it's the opposite, that it's two step forwards, two steps forward and one step back. So that's good because the success is still there. It's not wiped out. It's just mm -hmm. I wanna I want to continue to to move forward, and I have had a little bit of difficulty, emotional turmoil this past week, and uh, I'm not good at saying things because uh, my mother raised children who weren't fat and didn't cry, and those were the rules. Wait, a minute, wait, a minute. worked fast and didn't no. cry. My mother's children were not fat and they did not cry. Oh, oh not fat. Right. Okay. And Not we just, it wasn't allowed. <laughs> okay. Because we had to be starched and perfect. Uh, and oh, 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 wait, I, I got to make a note on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, and of I course, mean, my I, sister and I immediately put on weight as soon as she died because we were off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be, what was the phrase? Starched, not what? Starched and perfect. Starts and perfect. Yes. Okay. Whatever perfect is. 
Well, yes, my mother's was, per yeah, I mean, you should have seen us going to mass on Sundays. It was, yeah. anyway, it was something to see. Because <laughs> you were all dressed just so and all perfect. of that. Yeah, yep. perfect, 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 perfect. Yes. Perfect. All right. I have a sense that that might be a contributor to what you're going through now, but we'll mm -hmm. see. We'll yes. see. Okay. Now, but, 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 but tell me or tell us what, um, what has been the recurrence or what has been the recent problem? What happened? Uh, well, I was really ill um, at the end of life. I had an organ transplant in, in December. And you had, I've been a, wait, but you had an organ transplant. Yes. It, it, a liver transplant. Yes, okay. I did. In, last, de last December, which is now almost a year ago. Almost. Yeah. And it was, it was an easier recovery than most, I'm told, but it was still difficult. It was a difficult road. And... It was a lot of adjustment, and I've always been very fortunate that I've had a lot of friends, and they just weren't, except for a very few, five or six, there was no one really that interested. And there are those who can't be around me because I'm a reassembled science experiment. Uh, they're just too, they, they find it too, I'm too strange now. And, um, there are others who just can't deal with illness, and perhaps it's part of it is uh, there, but by the grace of God, go I, and they just can't face it. I don't know because they won't. They don't tell me. They just have vanished. Okay, what you're telling me now, Andre, I think is one of the things we'll get into having to do with the cause of what's going on. What right. my? Let me restate my question. Uh, what have been the symptoms that you have been experiencing oh. here recently? Oh, well, uh, just recurrence of anxiety from nowhere. I was j uh, thinking forward. Uh, I was sitting downstairs earlier in the week and on Wednesday or Thursday, and I had uh, I was going to make an appointment for a haircut. And my heart started, and my heart started to pound. And I thought, okay, what is happening here? And then I started to get anxiety about being in that chair, being under the cape, not being able to move, not being able to say, okay, I got to go because he's only half done. And I didn't make the appointment because there was no way I was going to be able to do it. Oh, okay. You have since made the appointment. You don't know if you're going to make yeah. it or not. Uh, well, well, we'll see. It's tomorrow. <laughs> okay. So we'll, we'll see. But, but, I, but at, at the moment, at, at the moment, anxiety for it or... Two, three, four, four. Okay, four. Sure. All right. All right. So it's it's a tangible, tangible thing. And when you get closer to it, it might be five, six, and right. Who knows? Who knows? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. But you were also, you know, in the email you sent me. Mm -hmm. I think you started off with. You had a dream. There were there was dreams you were having nightmarish type things where you were panicking and yeah i haven't had those in i don't know how long where i woke up anxious um probably since we started i i still these are the things that i don't have anymore so i don't remember that i had them until they happen again um and this particular dream was was one where i was uh my partner had to go to a party at, across the river in quebec and he and that's about 20 miles. So not particularly far, but far for me. And for some reason, I didn't. Whoa. <sighs> hmm. You're panicking now? No, I'm just thinking about that. I don't like how I've regressed to the, the, where I was in the dream because I felt helpless because he was leaving and I didn't want to go. But being alone was worse than making the trip. So I went. But before I went, I took a fistful of Ativan. In the dream, you don't do milligrams, you do fistfuls. And three shots of vodka, which I have done in the past a lot to quell anxiety. And I don't anymore. And I haven't since. And I remember in the dream, I was very disappointed in myself. But it was the only way I knew how to survive in that instance. And we got to the party. And there were people parked in behind us. And we couldn't leave. And I was, damn it, I was stuck there. And I couldn't get home. And no one would listen to me. And I and my partner kept disappearing. And I couldn't find him. And then I woke up and my chest was in knots. 
It was awful. Okay. Wow. As you, I haven't said it loud. <laughs> okay. As you say it now, Andre, does your chest get tight? No. A little bit. Two, three, two. Okay. Three, three maybe, yes. All right. All right. Now, in the dream, but I was picking up on what you were saying in the dream. Mm -hmm. And part of that dream was you couldn't find your partner. Your partner was going to go without you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, that was some of the things you said in there. Yes. And this was this was contributing to the 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 panic kind of thing. All right. Now, I'm going to give that for the moment the general label of abandonment. Does that ring with you? Absolutely. Oh, yes. Okay. That's not a phrase I remember you and I talking about previously, did we? Um, I had abandonment issues, I think. I mean, my dad died when I was three, and I'm told that I would have felt abandoned, but I don't remember it. No, um, I mean, when you and I were working before, I don't remember abandonment being a upfront term. Not really, but it's always been there in the background. Um, all right, all right. That, so, you know, there's a lot of things that I didn't tell you at the outset because I was afraid you'd say, oh, this guy's way too damaged. And I can't help him. <laughs> That's what I was afraid of. And so, well, uh, Andre, Andre, listen, <laughs> we are all way too damaged. Okay. Right. <laughs> that includes me. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, if you say so, <laughs> but I just didn't want to, you know, if they were, if I gave you a laundry list of, of everything that was, was, was wrong, I thought there's just no way that this is. So I told you the things that were most important at that time and the other things that just fell away as a result are, are remarkable. Okay. Remarkable. Well, all right. Now let me go on with the abandonment thing for the moment. Okay. Yeah. Right. You have to pull me back because I tend to go on tangents. That's all right. <laughs> okay. That's all right. Um, so we have abandonment issues in the dream. All right. Okay. Um, I'm also remembering not only in, in your letter to me, but I think in a, our previous conversation that you have friends that when you were going through your alcoholic phases and the liver transplant and you needed support, people you had supported yourself in their issues in time, mm -hmm. they weren't there for you. I'm hearing abandonment. Yes. And they knew. Okay. I know they knew because I know they were told about how sick I was. All right. But we're always, we're always working on your response to things, mm -hmm. not what somebody else did or didn't do. It's your response to it. That's a really important issue. But isn't everything always everyone else's fault? Uh, <laughs> well, we would like to think that, wouldn't we? Of course. <laughs> um, and then, now this might seem like a reach to you, and maybe it is, So, but let me explore it anyway. I'm hearing a, well, I'm hearing a father who died early. That's a form of abandonment. Yes. Okay. I'm also hearing your mother and you having to be starched and perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and you're, you, you are not fat and you don't cry. That's correct. To me, while that doesn't immediately say abandonment, in one sense, it's saying you better do this or I won't love you. And that's a form of abandonment. Oh, yes. how'd, how'd I do? Absolutely. Correct. Uh, there was always, there was always, it was never said, but there was the silent treatment. You knew you were in trouble. And my mother had a look on her face that you knew you were in trouble. And it was, it was, I mean, it, was, it wasn't a loveless household. It was, you know, she did love us, but there were there was com compliance that was required. Well, yeah, but what's important now? What's important now isn't that compliance was required. What, it isn't that you had to be starched and perfect. It's your response to that. And and I think what I want to get, I think what I'm hearing, and you may never have even thought of this before, and maybe it's accurate, maybe not, so you got to feed back to me, okay? Here's a mother who is loving in her own way and, and, and so on. Yes, yes, yes. But you've got to be starched, perfect, 
not fat and never cry. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm imagining young Andre saying, I've got to do all of this, which is a big thing to have to do, or I won't be loved. I won't deserve love or I'm not lovable. There's a lot of that. Okay. The friends who did not support you during your illness abandoned you. They weren't loving you as you would like to have them do. Except in this case, I believed I was uh, not owed it. No one owes anyone anything uh, that I, I or I wasn't entitled to it. I don't know what the word is. Uh, Reciprocation. It, Yes, because I've helped them. They should have helped me. Yeah, and yeah. okay. Yes. I helped you, therefore you owe me, and when I needed you, you weren't there, and now we mm. get to blame, we get to be angry, we get to... Right. Whatever. Okay. All right. Well, I'm putting all this together, and I'm... I can be wrong. I can be wrong, I, but I need to get your intuitive sense of this. That a contributor to this recurrence of panicking, go to the, the haircut, the dream, the so on. Um, this abandonment issue is part of it. Oh, my God, I can't be too far from home because I'm... I don't have my support system. I'm, I'll feel abandoned out there. Yes. And for some reason, I still need, a, I have a feeling of I need, you know, what if my, you know, I'm 10, 10 miles away from home and 20, 50 miles away from home and my car won't start. There'll be no one to rescue me. I shouldn't need to be rescued. At this yeah. Age. Yes. Yeah. Uh, unless, of course, you're, even rationally out there, your car won't start. Well, you've got a cell phone. How far are you away from someplace who can help you with your car? Right. <laughs> you know? Yes. I mean, it, it, it's a it's a doable in this world anyway. It's a nowadays it's a doable, fixable problem, mm -hmm. but it's not immediately fixable. And I'm hearing, I'm hearing that in the meantime you're feeling abandoned, and boy, does that ever hurt. It does a lot. All right, but abandon still still a useful word. It's the word. <laughs> okay. All right. Yes. You also mentioned in your letter. We'll get back to that in a moment. Mm -hmm. in, in your letter to me, you were thinking maybe because you have some sensitivity to turkey, mm -hmm. you had eaten some turkey, and you were fine to your surprise with the turkey and you and I never worked on sensitivity to turkey. Okay. No, no. <laughs> and you were fine with it for a while, but then you, then you later after a day or two, a day or two went by and you had no problems. I remember that, right? No, it was the next day when I started, I woke up the, the day of the, of the turkey that I had was that night was the nightmare. Oh, Okay. And the next so, day was the anxiety, the anxiety oh, attack. Okay. I had understood there were a day or two or three in between all that, but okay. But I didn't put the two together and had another turkey sandwich the next day. I was doing this because I'm hosting Thanksgiving and wanted to test if I was still sensitive to turkey. And apparently I am. Well, when you, when you ate the turkey the second time, the sandwich, uh, did you have an immediate response? Uh, no. Uh, uh, yeah. Any, any response? Not immediate. I didn't connect the two until two, till after the second time. Uh, why do I feel so crappy? What is different? What have I changed? And that's the only difference in my everything in anything okay. that I was do, that I that I regularly do. Well, intuitively, at least for the moment, I'm going to leave that one be. But let me let me tell you why. What we'll do with that? Um, typically, when somebody's sensitive to something. Turkey, for example, or, mm -hmm. you know, smelling some household chemical or, you know, there's all kinds of things people are sensitive to. The reaction happens right away. Boom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here it comes. Okay. Yours didn't. You had the set, you had the turkey and that, that night 
you had a, a, uh, I'm hearing possible coincidence is what I'm saying. Right. Okay. Oh, except I haven't felt like this in, in so long, like, like six, eight, 10 weeks. I haven't felt any kind of anxiety like this. And then I have the turkey and it happens. Well, so I'm not sure if we're doing coincidence. All right. We, yes. Well, I'm not going to go there yet. Okay. At least today. Okay. Um, because you subsequently had a turkey sandwich and didn't have an immediate reaction again. And then, uh, 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 okay. It could well be that all the previous work we did, just like it took care of heat urticaria and, and I, we didn't, that wasn't even on the table and OCD was on the table. It could well have taken any, taken care of any food sensitivities as well. It's possible. Right. It's mm -hmm. possible. Okay. It's also possible that you do have sun sensitivity to it, to mm -hmm. Turkey. Okay. And it did contribute, but I'm going with the idea and you correct me if you think I'm off base here. Okay, please. I'm going with the idea that if the Turkey, the sensitivity to Turkey is a player here, what it did was, was trigger um, abandonment feelings. Yes, it could have. There, well. it, it, it created some, some imbalance in the system and then yeah. some undone stuff that's still kicking around, like abandonment, which we did not address directly in the, our previous work. That makes perfect sense. Now shows up. Well, we're, we're, we're guessing in a way. We're guessing in a way. Because we have to go through all of this and see where we come out at the end and all of that. Uh, we go through all this and it still doesn't seem to do much. Well, maybe it's a turkey. Okay. Right. <laughs> so so we, can, we can address that at the time. But for, for the moment, given the time we have and so on, we'll leave the turkey on the table. How's that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So... The dream you had. Let me ask you. I, I don't want to put you through any unnecessary emotional turmoil. Mm -hmm. So I want. You, I'd like to have you guess for me. This we have a name for what I'm going to do. It's called the tearless trauma technique. Hold on one second. I want to do something here. Okay. Um, if you were to, don't do it. Just I want you to guess for me. If you were to let, let, let close your eyes and go back and revisit that dream in vivid detail, my partner not there and all of this, okay? What number of intensity do you think you would get to on a zero to 10 scale? No. Uh, it, was, it was very uncomfortable. It was maybe a seven, I guess. You said a 10? A seven. Eight, maybe? Well, oh, seven or, okay, seven or, seven or eight. I mean, okay. 10 to me is absolute out of control panic. So right. seven or eight would be. All right, all right. Probably. Well, okay, you are guessing, but as it turns out, in almost every case, the guess is useful enough for us to do something with it, okay? That right. way you don't have to go through all this turmoil and everything else, all right? So in that dream, as you recall it, I'm not asking you to, to go through it in great detail. What part of it stands out as most impactful? Not being able to get home. Um, not being wanted to be left at home. And then once I was at the destination, not being able to get home because our car, our car was blocked in. All right. Not wanting to be left at home. Um, has within it, in my perception, abandonment. Yes. All right. All because right. I was left at home, I would panic. So the panic right. that I experienced going to the destination would have been, I wouldn't have had it alone at home. All right. Now, if you can recall, this feeling of being left at home, abandoned, does it remind you 
of any other I am left at home type things way back in your past, hopefully childhood. My first panic attack happened. The first major one where I was out of control was when I was 15 and my mother had gone away for the weekend with her fiance. And I was old enough that I wasn't part of that relationship. Like I wasn't, I wasn't really included and she'd gone away. And I was just watching a movie and someone had a heart attack alone in their home. And I thought, what if that happens to me? And I spun right out of control and I ended up going to the hospital. Okay. And you left, you went to the hospital? Yes. My, my friend's parents came and got me and, and brought me to the hospital. So you went and called them, I guess, and said, oh, yes. I've, I've got a problem. Yeah. I didn't know what was happening to me because I... That was the first time ever? No. I, we, we've discussed the previous ones that I had when we were in the car with my... When I was in the car with my, my brother and mother when I was seven. And then when I was 12 and my, with my aunt and uncle in Italy. But... This one was a major one that lasted. It just continued for about, well, it was awful. For about half an hour. And I just, I couldn't see. And I had to leave All right. and go out. And I, 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 people were blurry and I couldn't stand properly. And it was, it was awful. Well, that was really awful. When your father, your father died in war activities, am I, do I remember that right? In the Cold War, he was detecting Soviet submarines when we were stationed in Scotland. Okay. In 1957. Uh, it was an airplane? Yes. Airplane, okay. And um, do, you, do, you remember, do, you, do you remember being told about that do you remember what i'm looking for is a feeling of abandonment at about that time i don't remember being told i just remember when we were back in canada uh, missing him somewhere along the line you were missing him somewhere along the line you learned it okay i'm looking for a sense of abandonment a moment that may have occurred can you find one that i don't have because I was two years and 11 months when he was gone. When, when I know that, I know it happened because I, I know that, that, that friends came to the house to tell my mother and, but, and my siblings knew, but they were older than me. And uh, we were sent to the next door neighbors. And right. so I'm told, but I don't remember anything about any of that. Okay, I, what I what I'd like to do, Andre, is is let's start with this age fifteen issue, mm -hmm. where your mom left, and that was a, that was. I'm hearing your first major panic attack. Yes. Okay. Um, and if you were if you were to vividly imagine that one guess for me again would you get to a 10 some other number yeah it's it was pretty awful it was it's a well it was would a 10 you, at the time now thinking about it it's because it's it's not real anymore it's a seven or an eight it's but it's 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 intense all right do you feel anything so maybe it's higher it's higher now it's higher yes Whew. okay yeah Okay, what do you feel in your body right now? Uh, my chest is tightening, and I'm just sort of projecting uh, in the forward. I'm expecting the panic attack. <laughs> God. Okay. Well, we've got an we've got an undone thing, don't we? I think we do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's bring an instinct therapist on this. Okay. okay. Age fifteen is not as foundational that is in time as I might like sometimes, but we're gonna see where it goes. It may point us to other things. It may be all we need. I, I don't know. We don't know mm -hmm. till we get there. Mm -hmm. So let's just bring an ending therapist on there. Let's just see what happens. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm gathering that you're a, you're a nine or 10 on that. If you really got yeah. into it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. You're even looking tense at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
All right. All right. So if you would, just close your eyes. Close your eyes. Take a nice, deep, relaxing breath. And just, um, just recall a loving moment. Nod your head whenever you're there. Mm -hmm. All right, good. All right. So that's just an invitation for unseen therapists. We're going to hand her this little panic attack issue at age 15, and uh, hopefully we'll get some help. Okay. So shift your focus back. There you are, age 15. Your mom leaves you at home. She, to use the term, abandons you. At least that that may not be her perception. She's actually going on a date, okay? And she's more interested in that and not, not really, I'm presuming, concerned about whether or not you're going to have a panic attack. And But nonetheless, she leaves. She, in your perception at least, abandons you. Just like you had been abandoned in other times previous to that and so on. But this one somehow or other really culminated as a biggie. Here come the chest tightness, the panic, and all of that. You need not get yourself into it. We're just describing it because unseen therapist knows all this. You don't have to drag yourself through it. We're just identifying it at the moment. So all this panic, you call somebody, neighbors say, you got to go to the hospital. But this panic, I'm being abandoned. Who's going to rescue me? All these irrational thoughts go on. An unseen therapist, of course, sees this. She understands that you're not really being abandoned. She understands that you're young. She understands you don't yet have the maturity to understand all that's going on. And you're bouncing off of past unresolved stuff. And it's quite natural, given your circumstances that all this would occur. All right. So as we've done before, we're going to represent this as in metaphorically, this panic feeling. I'm being abandoned as an unwanted vibration around your heart. Ta-ta, 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 like that. Unseen therapist sees it. In your imagination now, she's, in her understanding way, sends a gentle breeze towards you. It enters your system, your body. It surrounds this unwanted vibration around your heart, which may be even showing up as a chest tightening of some kind. And with that love surrounding that Ta-ta, ta-ta, ta-ta. It can't really survive because it is a f irrational thought to begin with. But, but it has its effect. So unseen therapist gently brings that loving breeze in and the unwanted vibration starts to fade. Ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. Ta -ta. Ta -ta. So we're going to do that again. Here you are at home. Mother's left. You panic. Ta -ta, ta -ta, ta -ta, ta -ta. The breeze. Ta -ta, ta -ta, ta -ta, ta -ta. Now take your time and just run through that another time or two or three or whatever you need to do. And whenever you think you've completed it, just open your eyes and we'll discuss what happened.
I was a child. She just picked me up and held me in her arms. Nancy the therapist. <sighs> she's in a, she's missed. She's, she's ethereal. And she, and I'm in color. And she just picked me up and held me in her arms. Huh. <sighs> She's back. She, she's, she's back. You say? Yeah, I couldn't find uh, her for a few days. Not very well, clearly. Let me, well, oh. let me let me suggest something about that. Okay, yeah. we'll talk. We'll talk more. You mentioned here in in your letter to me that you weren't able to find her. You weren't able to see her, etc. You don't really need to see her or find her. What you really need to, I mean, that's nice if you can. Yes. Okay. But it's not required to get results. You just hand it to her. And and you'll know if you get results by your by measuring your before and your after. You don't have to see her, feel her, et cetera, for her to help you. But it works better if I can see her. Well, um, you 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 may feel better about that, yes. Right. Um, but what I'm what I'm telling you is that it's not just because you can't see, feel, hear, etc. Just because you at the moment doesn't mean she's not there. Oh, okay. Um, well, okay. Let's just leave that be for the moment. I'll just sow mm -hmm. that seed. I'll sow that seed with you. Mm -hmm. But do you think anything happened here? Did you you feel better about it? I mean, what 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 went on? In, I feel in that? better. I still have tight, tightness in my chest, but it's it's uh -huh. less. Um, that's mainly where anxiety resides in me. Well, no, not mainly, but it, in in these past. The, uh, it's a physical symptom. Yes, it is. Okay. But I'm not shaking or sweating or or anything like that. It just manifests itself in, I suppose it could be, I've always been afraid that I I, have, I had a cardiologist when I was 25 because I was convinced I was going to have a, car, a heart attack. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, okay, what I'd like, I want to do a little testing now. Now, if you get uncomfortable, just stop. I'm going to ask you to do something. But if you get uncomfortable, okay. just stop, okay? Because sure. yes. we don't want to drag you through something unnecessarily. If you do get uncomfortable, that means we're, we got more to do. Okay? Mm -hmm. so, so start narrating to me. Tell me what happened. There you are, age 15, your mother. Uh, tell the story in some vivid detail and tell me if you get worked up about it, okay? Okay, my mother had gone away for the weekend. Actually, it was a long weekend um, in in the spring uh, when I was fifteen, and um, I was alone. Uh, there was uh, okay. This is the part I didn't. We were. I was at a restaurant earlier in the evening, and there was this person who was this this this. Uh, guy who was probably two or three years older than me who was interested in me and i didn't know anything about anything like that at that point and it made me very uncomfortable he was he was romantically interested in you yes uh -huh. and okay. i fled the restaurant because i didn't want uh, i didn't know anything about anything to do with anything like that at that age um as far as as far as my mind was concerned and i went home and i was uncomfortable with it and it remained with me and i was so i just thought okay well i'll distract myself with a movie or a tv show and i was watching it and a person had a heart attack in their home and they were alone and i knew my mother was it was saturday night and my mother wasn't coming back until monday and i was going to be on the floor by myself not being able to be helped and huh so it's not as bad it's like a four maybe well a it's three, like a, a three mm -hmm. okay it's like a three or four but i want to point out and for students listening in also the 
element of this other fellow at the restaurant that seemed to have some romantic interest in you and, and you didn't know it. That didn't show up in our previous conversation, but now somehow it shows up here and contributed to the issue. Am I, yes? Well, now that I, yes, <laughs> yes. I don't know why I didn't mention it. Or, well, I didn't think about it until I was thinking, you asked me to picture myself sitting in the living room of my home. All right. And well, that, okay. Yeah. That often happens. We will start doing something on what you can present, what you do remember, what you do recall. We'll make a specific event. I will bring an unseen therapist and and go forward. But these are called aspects. It's lesson number three in your advanced, advanced mm -hmm. lessons and all that. Um, all about aspects. It's lesson number four as well. But these things start showing up. So now we have another aspect. We have this other fellow coming in, somehow a contributor to the problem, somehow an imposition, somehow a lack of safety in some fashion. How am I doing? Very well. Yes. Um, it was very confusing because I wasn't sure where uh, he was not aggressive, but insisting well if you're not gonna we were all supposed to go to some festival and fr from the restaurant i was with there were several friends and he was there with someone else that i didn't really know and he said well i, I wasn't going to go because i started to feel very anxious about the whole idea and he said well if you're not going to go why don't i come back to your place with you and i was I wasn't having any of that uh -huh. um and so they left and I went home and I was alone and confused and uncomfortable. And so Am I that, hearing? Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, no, no, I'm sorry. no. That's all. Am I hearing in there? And this is my speculation. So shoot me down if it's wrong. Okay. That somewhere in there, you're alone at home in the back of your mind. Maybe this fellow's going to show up. No. Okay. He would never, no, he, I wasn't worried about that. All right. It was somehow a contributor. Now, let me, uh, one of the things that sometimes that happens, I've seen with some, with some frequency, but not all the time. Wait. It, it, okay, yeah, it did cross my mind that he might just show up. And it, that, would it, have, that, that would have been bad. That would have been very extremely uncomfortable because not only were we required to be slim and starched, we were all and perfect. We were also required to be polite. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So I couldn't uh, be unkind to somebody who showed up at my door, and so I didn't want to be put in a position where I had to where I had to be unkind. All right. So we have a potential contributor to this that wasn't on the table to begin with all right, right. Mm -hmm. so with that in mind if we always want to be thorough here if we can all right close the eyes all right we're gonna bring unseen therapist is already here we don't need to formally invite her at this point and now we have the possibility going back to this age 15 issue being at home feeling abandoned that there's a lack of safety in here somehow. This fellow may show up. And other things might happen as well if you're all alone, but this fellow might show up. He's older than you, you know. You gotta be polite. <gasps> okay. And nobody is there to help you. You have been abandoned in this sense. Ah, now, we'll use a little different metaphor this time we'll use the metaphor of a throbbing red ball let that throbbing red ball float in front of you, the size of a basketball maybe and it represents the threat of not only this other fellow but anything else that may have occurred or might occur in your imagination while you're home alone, abandoned, with no one to help you. And so 
the the emotional your emotional response to all this this abandonment who's going to help me the fear and all of that the 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 the, 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 the basketball the throbbing red basketball goes boom 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 like that unseen therapist brings your breeze in and there it is in front of you and you can just see it and as she brings in her loving understanding about this with a breeze and all of that now actually she hovers over it she hovers over the ball and drops some gentle loving not water but love rain over it comes over the ball the boom boom begins to go boom fades into nothingness the color turns from red you know to pink to flesh color to nothingness the size becomes a basketball baseball marble bb nothing so go ahead and repeat that that process in your mind a time or two or three or whatever it takes just take your time uh, i don't need to it's already gone Oh, okay. It just went from red to 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 pink to white to to nothing to black to the dot you used to get in the middle of the television. Yeah. And then it vanished. All right. Wow. Well, okay. That I think I'm hearing what appears to be success. Yes. That's well I yes. And my right. chest is a sorry. My chest is a one point five. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, not quite a speaking, one, not quite a two. <laughs> you're speaking to an engineer. Why isn't it one point six? Come on, be a little more accurate. <laughs> okay. Can't you be more polite? Can't you do it right? <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, mother. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, but again, we want to test. So let's do it. I want to do it a little differently this time. Instead of you telling me the story for now, instead, close your eyes, run through that whole thing as vividly as you can. Imagine it. Imagine the fellow showing up or your fear of the fellow showing up and mother's gone and panic and try to get yourself upset and tell me what happens. Hmm. It's just square crystals floating around, and I'm able to say, I'm sorry, you have to leave. And I'm fine with that. I don't feel guilty. I don't feel bad. I can see that he's disappointed. Too bad. Hmm. All and right. I see these blue, sort of uh, prismic crystals everywhere floating around in the air. That is so Are cool. And Are they Jackson. good or good or bad or they're, they're the beautiful? Well, they're oh, okay. like prisms, so you can see the rainbows in them. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, okay. Wow. And they just—I've uh, never seen those before, and they just have, have just appeared, and they're just floating around, and they're peaceful, and the chest right. is, and my chest is fine. I, yeah, tiny, tiny. I can just feel it, but it's it's. It wants to be gone. A, a point three two, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> yes, I actually. <laughs> three 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 three. <laughs> All right. I still want to test. I want to test okay. some more. Okay. Because mm -hmm. see, what we're doing here is we're we're trying to be thorough. Yes. And we're looking for what's not done yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, as we, I'm going to go back to the earlier part of our conversation. Always want to test, and the best test is the real world and the real circumstances. So, you've had weeks of relief from a lot of stuff as a result, but all of a sudden, the real world is getting to you, and somehow or other, this one showed up. So that's a test. This issue we're speaking of, this this more recent panic attack, and so on. 
So those are tests. You're always testing, always testing. I, I am always suspicious because I'm always looking for what's not done yet. Just a way of being thorough. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to do now with this. So I'm going to give you some instructions, if you will. Mm -hmm. And that is for you now to tell me the story of what happened. There I am alone. And, but tell it to me in a vividly graphic way. There I am home alone my mom is gone on a date with her fiance and i'm here and somebody may knock on my door and nobody's gonna do it that way okay you're literally trying to get yourself worked up about this that's what we're trying to do okay um all right i i was out for dinner beforehand um, and with a, a group of friends that I was close to, I was in, in high school and there was someone who didn't go to my high school who was there and I didn't really know him, but he was gay and I was not, and he was interested and they were all going to this music festival and I wasn't interested. And, and, I and what, to... what, what, what did he say? Can you remember the words? Yeah. You, you and it's, me, Andre, you and me or yeah. what? You know, he said, well, if you're not going to go, then I'll come with you to your house. And I said, no, no, that's fine. You go. And, and how did you, how did you feel at that moment? Uncomfortable. But, um, because it was, I, I didn't know what I was then. And because I was 15 and I certainly wasn't going to, but everyone knew with this person that, that he was gay and, uh. My mother always said, show me who your friends are and I'll show you what you are. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so um, I wasn't going to allow anyone to think anything about anything that I wasn't even sure about yet. And so it was very uncomfortable. And your, and your reputation was on the line. Absolutely. And people were going to reject you maybe. Well, of course. That was the 1980s. This was not, it was not, that was not normal yet and this guy wants my body yep okay well let's see i'm i'm trying to put all the emphasis in okay yes um yeah i was rather indignant about it actually uh because i i i didn't i didn't know anything i was too young to know anything um and so i i went home and i was in the living room watching television and I can see, um, I mean, I, I can see being in the room and being very comfortable because it was, it was very comfortable. Um, and then turning on this, this TV show and this person had a heart attack in her home. And I thought, what about me? You know, what if that happens to me and I'll be alone and my mom isn't coming home until Monday. What am I going to do? All right, let me, stop, just, you. Let, let me stop you there's, right there's, there. There's no nothing. There's nothing. <laughs> nothing. I want, but let's go back over it again. Yeah. Okay. There you are. You're watching. The, is it one of these medical shows or it something? Was, or actually, yes. Okay. I remember Doctor. the episode. It was called. It, it was well. I earlier I said it was a movie, but no, it was a show. It was called uh, Trapper John. Oh. And okay. It was a medical drama set in Los Angeles. Okay. And so. So the fellow who had the who the fellow had a heart attack or a woman? Oh, it's a woman. Yes, a, a woman had a heart attack. Mm -hmm. um, and... Let's get down to the specifics of that, if you can recall it. Was she lying in a hospital bed? Was she walking oh. around her kitchen or what? It happened in her apartment, and she was alone. Oh, and... in her apartment, and she was alone. Okay. Yes, like and... you. Yes, she was. Yes, exactly like me, because I I identified I. What if that, that could happen to me? And of course, healthy 15 year olds don't have heart attacks, but it doesn't matter when you have, when, when you start having a panic attack, yes. <laughs> you're not logical. Yes. Um, and so I, but I was, I was going to be lying on the floor until Monday when my mother came home to rescue. Yes. To rescue me. And, okay. and so I called my friend's parents because one of the friends, she was at the music festival and I wasn't there. And I knew that her parents were um, 
at home. And so I phoned them and they came and got me and they brought me to the hospital. Yeah, but let's get back. When you when you were on the phone with them, what did you say? Ha ah, ah, ha ah, ha, come yeah. help me, come help me, come. I, 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 I don't know what's No, I pretended I was asking for my friend. And they said, well, no, she's, she's out. I thought she was with you. And I said, okay. And they said, are you all right? And I thought, well, there's my entrance. And so I said, I don't know what's happening to me. And I'm, I'm just, uh, I, I can't catch my breath. And I'm, I, my heart is pounding. And I'm, I, 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 I don't know what to do. And I, I had already left the house by this point. This is when I, when I got back, I decided to phone them. But I'd already gone to the store to get anything to be in contact with people. And someone I passed on the street taunted me called me a faggot and uh that oh my <laughs> perhaps that's relevant all right you just got a little spike yes well no just maybe it's relevant that someone taunted me on the on the way to the store to get whatever i was going to get i don't remember i just had to be out of the house and I, oh yes i picked up a newspaper and i thought that would distract me i'll get a newspaper and i'll, I'll come home and i'll be fine and i wasn't and when i got through the door i saw the Saw the house before me empty, and I thought, oh, I'm not going to make it. I got to call. I got to to call someone, and I called them, and they immediately came in and got me and brought me to the hospital. As you tell this now, are you getting worked up? No, I'm not. A little <laughs> tightness, maybe, in well, the chest. Three point three two or what? Mm, maybe a two seven five. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, that's that's a something. Okay, so what makes the two point seven five or whatever it is, the two or three? What what makes that? Just the tightness in the chest. That's it. Well, but I'm I'm thinking emotionally, what is going on? That see, the tightness in the chest is a symptom. It has a cause. I'm looking for the emotional cause somewhere in that story. Is it when when you were called a faggot? All of a sudden, there it shows up. That was pretty unpleasant because I was feeling terrible at the time and I didn't look particularly gay. I was just tidy. Um, back then you had to either you looked gay or you didn't. Uh -huh. um, and so it was upsetting and I remember it. I'm being taunted. And there was two or three of them, but one person said something. The other two didn't. They just laughed. Ah, they laughed at me. Okay. Or they laughed at their friend. Having said that to me. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That is a form I'm hearing of rejection and or abandonment. Yes. By strangers even. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who don't even know you. Right. All right. But see, that's the kind of thing that triggers something from the past. Typically. That's why I wanted to go as far back as we could. Okay. Okay. But let's see where we can go with this. I want to do a little bit more just on that little piece. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so close the eyes. Mm -hmm. And there you are. There are these people you don't even know. And by background, let's just talk about where they may be coming from. For them to call you any kind of a name or bully you in any fashion, that has a cause in and of itself. And the typical cause for that is they need to elevate themselves at somebody else's expense. They need to call somebody a name. You're a dwarf. You're a faggot. You're a freak. You're a whatever. Okay. When such people with unrest have that unrest, they need to elevate themselves. So they, they downplay somebody else in this way. That's not to excuse the behavior. That's to understand the behavior. It has nothing to do with you. Tidy, maybe, or whatever. That's their perception or something. Okay. But it's really their issue. But unseen therapist understands that your response to that issue is, uh-oh, I'm being rejected, a form of abandonment yet again. And give me the words if you recall that. Was it, hey, faggot, or you faggot, or what? What were the words? Oh, I, I, they're even more vivid now. Um, it, was, it was a girl, and she said, uh, as I walked by, she said, don't forget choir practice, gay boy. 
faggot. Okay. Bitch. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's not be human now, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, so, but, but it, it, she doesn't know you from a load of snow. Am I correct? Correct. All right. So, academically, we're going to say, well, that's her issue. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we still want to get to your response. We want to get to your response. So, so keep the eyes closed if you would. Mm -hmm. So, here it comes. It stings a little bit. It's a, re a reminder of some other kind of rejections or abandonment from the past. And so here we go. Unseen therapist comes in and brings a gentle, it's another metaphor. Just to give you the idea, we can use all the metaphors you want, just whatever seems to be fun for you. The unseen therapist now brings in a, creates a small, loving, cloud the cloud is floating around is nothing but love it understands everything including this faggot comment by this girl and it floats inside of you it's peaceful it floats around wherever you want it to be and it notices inside of you is echoing these words faggot and whatever the else the girl put around it and it just gently looks at it, smiles, invites those words in to the loving cloud and the words in your imagination are happy to walk in. They're just words. They walk in. And they become cleansed. And they changed into, aren't you beautiful? Aren't you beautiful? This girl doesn't see that. She's trying to see her own stuff. But aren't you beautiful? Spend a little time with that. And whenever you're done, just let me know. Open your eyes and let me know. Okay. All right. Seem helpful or can you tell? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the tightness is perhaps I miss, I have to regauge it because it was probably a four when I said it was a two, seven, five, because now it's a point seven, five. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so I'm there's sure still there's, yes, there's there's still something left. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to aim at the symptom, and then we're okay. going to see what happens. Okay, so mm -hmm. close the eyes. Mm -hmm. Unseen therapist now sees the tightness in your chest, and let's imagine it. That tightness is being a series of small knots that need to be untied, and there they are these little knots, unseen therapist comes in and with her very loving fingers and take your time, whatever you want to do, she unties the knots. Unties this one. Ah. Unties that one. Ah. And so on. Let me know whenever you're done. A lot. I mean, it's they're on all untied, and they're like a. They kind of look like a horse's tail that 
has been brushed. Except there's a there were a couple after she had untied the ones that as I looked down further down there was another knot and then it got untied and then now it's they're all untied. That is so friggin' cool. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I have I have another test for you, okay? Okay. All right. Close your eyes mm -hmm. and run this entire age 15, I'm at home, mother's gone, faggot thing, gay guy at the restaurant, the whole thing. Run the whole thing in your mind in vivid terms. You were a 9 or 10 with the chest tightening. Run it through. Look, look for what might be left, and tell me what's what you come up with. I don't care. I don't care. Oh. I mean, it's not an issue. Okay. Well, I, I, I took longer because I actually went from the restaurant and then I could picture the stores on the street and then down the street and then down my street and then into my, and, and then back out again to the store and then the taunting and then more bullying than taunting actually and then back again and then making the call and then going to the hospital and then staying at their place afterwards and i was completely fine and safe and now i am too with the whole thing okay hmm. you're gonna do another little test okay okay earlier in our conversation we were talking about this dream that you had where your partners was leaving without you and all of that was the dream and I asked you to guess for me what your intensity would be if you really vividly imagined that dream, okay? And you said you, you would guess it would be a seven or an eight. If you're comfortable doing so, I'd like to have you now go through that dream in detail and tell me if you're still a seven or an eight or if you are, whatever number you are. Does that work? Yeah, I can do that. All right, go ahead. You want me to tell you, want me to tell you about it? No, close your eyes oh, and okay. run the movie. <sighs> well, okay, everything is hmm, okay. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, it's not really an issue. I mean, it's not. I mean, I, I ran through everything, and in the new version, I didn't end up going because I didn't have to, because I was fine staying home by myself. But if I forced it, everything was wasn't didn't need to be vivid anymore. It was all. Um, sort of foggy and pleasant, like clouds. And I was looking around the party for my partner and there was, and the unseen therapist was there. He's there, 
don't worry. That was fine. And there was no anxiety about needing to get home because I'd get there when I got there. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Yeah. Well, Andre, I've heard that kind of response before. <laughs> and to okay. me, that's a positive response. It means we're getting someplace. Yes. Okay. Well, absolutely. I'm, uh -huh. yeah. I shouldn't be surprised, <laughs> but I am. Okay. Well, I have one more test for you. Okay. All right. This is sort of like a future test. Please close your eyes. Imagine yourself going to tomorrow's haircut and something happening and you can't leave and you're panicked and all that. Try to create that and tell me if you get your panic response. It's not as bad, um, but I can. I'm un, I'm a little uncomfortable. I'm a four on that. I think. What What makes you uncomfortable? What part of it? Being there and not being able to leave. Being. I mean, you can't leave halfway through a haircut. You can't instruct them. Okay, we'll just cut it evenly and keep cutting it evenly until so I can leave at any time. You can't say yeah. that. So they cut, yeah. cut one side, and I can't leave then. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I know the, the whole, yeah, the, the whole process behind this is not to put yourself in situations where you have to flee because, and, and not to have to feel the absolute panic because you walk into it not prepared not to have it, right? Well, with what it already looking, gone. What we're, what we're really looking for is your response to all of that. And what you're telling me is something is unresolved still because it's kicking up about the mere thought of being in that chair and can't leaving, can't mm -hmm. leave. Right. Did I say it right? Yes. Okay. What does that can't leave remind you of in, from your past? Can you, anything come up? No, the first thing that locked in the my brother locking me in the dryer in nineteen. Oh, I, I remember that. As you say that now, do you get any intensity? No, he was just an unpleasant person. <laughs> well, I remember uh, you and I you mentioning that before. I'm not sure we worked on that, but no, we didn't. But that was a time where I I was trapped and i could see out through the window and no of the dryer and no one could hear me it might have been a washer i don't know it was one that, it was an extra appliance that was in our laundry room um that wasn't used because i don't know why it wasn't used because oh because the house that we moved into had its own appliances um and i don't remember much about i just remember being locked in there and I don't know how long I was and, or I'm pretty sure my brother did it to me. I mean, I got into it because it was like a spaceship with a window and I remember screaming to get out and I couldn't. Are you getting tense while you say that? Remember screaming, getting out and couldn't? No, not anymore. Um, okay. Well, let's do one little more little piece on this. Okay. okay? All sure. Right, so close the eyes. Unseen therapist is already here. Mm -hmm. And let's move forward into the possibility of the haircut tomorrow. Okay. And getting partway through it and wanting to leave and getting a, I can't leave, I can't leave, I can't leave. And let's imagine that four being this unresolved. We'll go back to the unresolved uh, excess vibration around your heart. Okay. So there it is, represented metaphorically to unseen therapy. Ta 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 ta, I can't leave, I can't leave, I can't leave, I can't leave, I can't leave. Something similar to being 
in the washer or dryer locked in there. I can't leave. I can't. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I can't leave. I can't leave. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Ta 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 ta. Unseen therapist with a smile. And again, her very cooling breeze. Sends that healing breeze towards you. I can't leave. I can't leave. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I can't leave. I can't leave. I can't leave. I'm stuck. I can't leave. And run that a time or two or three or whatever is useful for you. And open your eyes whenever you're done. two things so it's like a one but an interesting physical thing happened which never happens to me um i something got stimulated and i started over salivating <laughs> okay i don't know what that means or what that could mean but I, I don't know why that would happen because it doesn't happen before but i just realized that i had to be swallowing and so something got stimulated somewhere. Okay, that, well, that's a that's a great clue, not for this session, but for some other session. It's just one of those see the physical symptoms that show they have a cause. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um that may or may not be related to where we wanted to go today. What we wanted to do today was to get a really good start on what seemed to be left over from all the other your term remarkable work that we that we yes. did. Okay. Well. It's nothing short of remarkable. Okay, but we're not really going to get our answer. We're not really going to know until time goes on, till you go get your haircut, till you have your Thanksgiving party, till you know things unfold, and you find out if your panic and the occasional need for Ativan seems to show up again, or does it fade? Okay, we're not going to know until that kind of testing has gone on but we've done we try to do thorough testing now but the ultimate test is later but it's a, the purpose here was to get a good start on that Absolutely. and i yes. i think i i think we did that i think so too okay all right anything else you want to go over now before no um i'm feeling more confident about doing this getting my hair cut tomorrow and uh I'm pretty sure I can do it without Ativan. And, you know, if I had to leave with my hair half cut, I could. <laughs> so it wouldn't be the end of the world. Well, somebody might look at you and, and well, call you a freak or something. <laughs> of course, it's happened before, and I've got hats. So, uh, <laughs> so it, well, I can laugh about it, and that's a good thing. That's a very okay. good thing. All right. So I'm way further ahead than I was when we started. So thank you right. very much. All right. Okay. Well, let's just call this a good start then. And I hope those who listen in, you know, have learned something valuable from this. I, I also want to point out to those listening in, there's some essential links that are below this video, you know, for advanced training, if you want it there for or my free ebook and my newsletter and things there, oh, that's free support and so on. So I urge you, I urge you to go there. So let me know, let me know, Andre, what happens, okay? I will. Thanks so much, right. Barry. I really appreciate it. All right. See you okay. in a bit. Okay. Take care.